My name is Jacob Creech. I work as Developer Relations at Solana Foundation. Today, we're going to expand on the gold tokens that you earned in the previous day of the bootcamp. We're going to do a deep dive working with tokens in general in Solana, learn PDAs in much more detail, and how to create a staking program for those tokens. Now, what do I mean when I talk about a staking program? The staking program that we will build today will allow you to deposit tokens earn rewards for the stake that you have in the program. And the longer that you have those tokens staked, the more rewards that you will receive. Now, why would you want to do this? A stake program can have many applications. Take, for example, if you're building a mobile game where you send woodcutters to chop wood in a forest. The longer the woodcutters are in the forest, the more wood they will cut. On the program level, both the woodcutters and the wood can be represented as tokens. If you can send your woodcutter token to chop wood by depositing it within the program, the program would then generate wood tokens for you over time. All right, let's get to building this staking program. Now, it's good practice before you build any program on Solana to first kind of draw out what accounts that you will be using within the program. We do this early so that you can know what to expect when you're working with the accounts and the account model on Solana. And it kind of also helps that when you are working later, you don't realize, oh, uh, I needed this account earlier and have to rewrite all the code previously. So first off, we know that we have these users. So we have a user and they have wallets, right? And for our case, they have specifically a PDA called the gold token account. So that, that gold token account is directly related to the user and is a PDA. So we know that we have this account and then the user, which is also an account. Because remember, everything is an account on Solana. Next that we know that there is going to be a stake program. Now, for the users to deposit gold tokens into the stake program, they're going to need a, a specific stake program account on the stake program itself. So we know that that's going to be, we're going to call it right over here, we're going to call the user stake account. Now this is going to be a PDA off the stake program and let's derive it with the key or the seeds of token. And this would actually be token plus user pub key. Now the reason why we do both the, the string literal token plus user pub key is so that we can directly relate this account to the user by user pub key. We don't want someone that is a different signer, say another user, accessing the user funds of someone else. That would be a security risk. So make sure that you always put in your seeds correctly and, and adding a user pub key to your seeds creates a user space in P your PDAs on your program. Uh, secondly, whenever you stake those tokens within the stake program, we're going to have to know exactly what, what time you stake those, those tokens. So in that, we'll have to know a, some, some stake info. So let's create a stake info account. This will be another PDA. And this PDA, let's just derive it off of, let's call it stake info uh, plus user pub key. And so we'll have the string literal of stake info and user pub key in order to get the information about their specific stake on the program. This information would be like the slot time so that we know how to generate the rewards. And speaking of rewards, we're going to need some, have to need a place for the rewards to come from on the stake program itself. So let's create a stake, uh, another token account called gold 
token vault. So this is where all the rewards will be generated from. And we will create the seed of vault for those rewards. So there we have it. We have all the accounts that we are required to run the stake program. We have the token account that is owned by the user. We have the token account that is the stake by the staking program. We have the information about this different uh, token accounts that are staked. And then finally, we have the token account that all the rewards come from. Now, you might see somewhere in the wild that whenever you have a token account off of a program, you have something that looks like this. People usually sometimes or sometimes create a PDA that is just for signing. So this would be like a signing PDA. That would be derived off of the stake program. And then the authority of the gold token vault would be the signing PDA. That way the stake program can sign for transfers within the gold token vault. However, this is not required and it's actually not best practice. So instead what you can do, and this is usually not what you expect at first, is you can take that gold token vault. So we're gonna add the seeds back just for completeness sake. Instead, you can take that gold token vault and make the authority itself. And given that it's authority itself, uh, you can then use that PDA off of the stake program to sign for the transfers for itself. Uh, it kind of removes the need for extra accounts. And usually when you're working on Solana programs, the less accounts, the better. The reason being is if you have less accounts, your transactions are smaller, your compute, uh, compute usage is smaller, and the transactions will cost cheaper in the long run if compute ever ends up costing any amount of soul. So here we go. We have all the accounts that we needed for the stake program to run. So let's get to coding. Okay, so first what we're gonna do is we're going to initialize a new anchor project. So what you could do is anchor in it, and we're gonna call this staking program. And so what this will do is it will create the program or the anchor project for us to work in to create this stake program. So you can see you got initialize and we'll CD into the staking program. And you can see here that if I open this up, it has an app. That app is for usually where you store the front end. We're not gonna have a front end, we're gonna write just tests for this program. You have your program, which is a lib.rs file. You can see here it's just a base initialize function as well as a base initialize account. Um, and then the test will just run initialize and that is it. So we're gonna check right here and just make sure we're at anchor 28 for the uses of this tutorial or this bootcamp day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be working with the Solana CLI version 1.16.0. Uh, so if you're not on anchor 28 or Solana CLI 1.16.0, make sure you change these versions because it's no guarantee that this, this program will work or be backwards compatible if you have a major version change. Um, finally, we're gonna be using the Anchor version to also compile of Anchor 28 as well. All right, so first off, I'm gonna make sure that this builds just to make sure that they're not running into any issues. So we're gonna do Anchor build and we're gonna wait for the build. Perfect, so if you ran anchor build and you just got a few warnings, that's perfect. So if you look at these warnings and you're wondering, what do these warnings mean? Uh, this is meaning because we're using, we have a context in the parameter here and we're not using it. Uh, if we're not using it, it's telling us to put an ins underscore as a prefix, but we will use in the future. So let's just leave it there. Um, but otherwise it compiled and everything worked. So let's get started. So looking back at this diagram, uh, we can see that we're gonna use the seeds of vault, stake info, and token. So I wanna make sure that we do this early and include those three seeds in constants. So first off, up here, we're gonna create a pubmon constants, and we're gonna create some constants for us to reference uh, while we are 
running through this program. So first will be the vault seed, which will be uh, reference U8. And that will equal the string literal of, looking back at it, just vault. Uh, this then will do pub const. Let's see, we have stake info next. So stake info seed, same type, equals string literal. And we had it as stake underscore info. Finally, we're going to have the last one, and this one's going to be the token seed. As looking back here, we have this token. That's going to be the same type of string literal token. Perfect. So we have all the constants that we need, and we have the vault, the stake info, and the token for seeds. All right. So getting into initialize, the way that you usually write programs is you, or at least the way that I like to write them. So I like to scaffold first, what are the different instructions or functions that I need within my program, and then create all the accounts. So we know that, that we need an initialize because if the gold token vault doesn't exist, we need to be able to create it uh, before there's anything else or any other actions happening within the stake program. So going back here, we have the initialize function. It's going to have an initialize struct. We'll get to these accounts in just a moment. Secondly, we're going to need a function that allows the user to take the action of staking to the stake account. So here we have yet another one. We're just going to copy and paste this for now. We're going to call this stake. And if we look at this, uh, we're going to want to be able to stake an amount. So we're going to add the amount as a parameter for the stake function. And finally, whenever we are, want to get rid of the stake or destake, we're going to have a destake function that then gives us rewards, resets our stake info, and gives us back our balance from the stake account. So that is the final function. So we're just going to paste that back. And this one's going to call it dstake, right? All right. So we have our three functions, or, or these are each instructions. And now we need to create the accounts with an initialize. So if we look at these, this initialize, we have to think, what do I need whenever I initialize this? So first off, we know that we're going to have to need this gold token vault, right? So we're going to have to create an account. And this will be account. Uh, we're going to use something called init if needed. So what init if needed is, is it allows us to initialize the account if it doesn't already exist. So what that means is if I call this instruction of initialize up here, it won't create the account if it already exists. But if it doesn't exist, have it, have it be created. Um, so in and if needed, we're going to have the seeds of, if you look up over here, it was vault. So constants was a vault seed. Uh, because it's going to be a PDA, we always need a bump. Um, so this is where we need a pair. So the pair will equal this, the person who is the signer of the transaction. So in a moment, we'll go add that, but we know that it has to be the signer. So let's go add it right now just so that we know about it. So right here, we're going to have another account. It's going to be mutable because we're going to use it as the signer to pay for things. And that's just going to be the signer. Signer. All right. And just so that it carries throughout, we're going to do the lifetime. Perfect. So we can see here, this pair is referencing the account up here of signer. Um, there's two other things. So we have the token mint and then the token authority. I'll set those up in just a moment once I've finished writing everything. So this account 
will be the public. Um, this will be a token vault account. And this will be a type of account, info token account. All right, so let's go back for just a moment. So if you remember what I was talking about earlier, is that in order to sign for the transfer of this, you would have to have the authority of itself. So here up here, we have the authority. We're gonna have the authority of itself. Um, secondly, we have a mint right here. And you might be asking, what, what is the mint? So when you're using tokens within programs, so any type of token account, you're gonna need a number of accounts that are always required in order to manage those accounts. So you're gonna need the public mint. which is a type account mint. Uh, you're gonna always need the, the token program, which is of type program token. And then because we're creating an account, we will be needing the system program. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to create the token account. System. All right, so right now we have all of this information, um, oh, and we have this token mint equals. We need to make sure that it equals the mint down here. All right, so right here, we have all the information to initialize the accounts. We have the token vault account being initialized on startup, and that is all we need. So let us anchor build this, and we should run into a few errors. The reason being we will run into a few errors because we included all this stuff from token, and this is not used. And then in and if needed is not available as well by default. So let's just run through those as a practice. So we're gonna do anchor build and immediately it's gonna to run to a few errors. So if we go down, uh, we're going to, ah, yes. So there we go. Uh, we're going to go to the first error. That was just me accidentally not putting a semicolon. Let's run it again. All right, perfect. We got some more errors. Let's scroll up to the first error so we can see, all right. It's exactly what I said. In and if needed, it doesn't exist. Uh, so we need to make sure that we include that feature when we start. So right here, we'll go to cargo. And we'll see here that it says anchor lang equal 0.28.0. So in order to include new features, you'll have to do the following. So you're going to equal to the bracket. This will be version equals same version 0.28.0. However, I'm going to make sure that I include the features of init if needed, right? So here, what I have is I have anchor lang, including the, vision, the feature init if needed on version 28. So that should cover this. So finally, we should run into one more error, and that is something about us not including SBL token or anchor SBL into the cargo tunnel. So let's just wait just for practice when we want to see the error and then use it. All right, so if you look here, we have a bunch of things about missing token, missing mint, missing token account. So let's make sure that we add those and we can actually see right here, the Rust compiler is very smart in saying, hey, I couldn't find Anchor SBL. You should import this crate. So let's go import them. So here in the dependencies for Cargo Tomal, we're going to just type in anchor SBL. Um, we're going to make sure that it's of the latest version of 28. Uh, and that is it. And then finally, right here at the top, we only have is use anchor lang prelude, right? Uh, we have to make sure that we use the other stuff within the crates as well. So we're going to do use anchor SBL. And there's a few things that we need. So token. Uh, we're going to need token of self, mint, token, token, account. Perfect. So this should be everything that we've used. And let's do an anchor build and see if we ran into any issues or forgot anything. All right. So it looks like I ran into an error still. So let's see what we forgot. You can see that I just said I forgot a semicolon. That's a pretty simple error. Let's go fix that real quick. And we can see here it finished, successfully released the target, some, uh, a few warnings about missing context and not using account mounts just as earlier. That's okay. Let's just continue. All right. 
So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the test, right? And we're going to take this test, and we want to make sure that we test the initialize functionality. Uh, if we don't do this first, we might run into issues later and not know what we're doing, right? OK, so if we do anchor test, anchor test will run a local validator on the test. But in order to speed it up, we're going to run it ourselves. You can see I'm already running it over here. But let's restart it just for so you all can understand how it looks. So I'm going to run Solana Test Validator. That's going to test or run a Solana Test Validator in my background. It's currently at slot 200,000, 218,000. All right, so let's do anchor test. And this one's going to be skip local validator. What this does is it skips the local validator setup. It makes this quite a bit faster. And you saw here that at the beginning, it was doing a bunch of uh, re transactions. And this deployed my program to program ID this. Now, it failed, and let's explain why. So we can see here, the invalid valid argument of the token vault account was not provided. So let's explain that a little bit. Whenever you make a transaction on Solana, you need to make sure that you're including all the accounts required to make that transaction. So if you look over here, whenever we were doing in the initialize instruction, we have it using these this set of accounts. Namely, token vault account is the one that was not included. So let's make sure we include it. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create the accounts that are required. And those accounts are the vault. We're going to have to create a mint because the token accounts have to be created off a of vault or off a of mint, and let's get started. So first off, we're going to have to create that mint account. We want to make sure that we save it. So in order to create mints, uh, this is using Mocha, uh, we're going to have to include it as yarn add at Solana, I believe it's SPL slash SPL token, right? All right, and we already have Coral Anchor. Uh, we're also, let's see, do we already have, let's check. Uh, we also don't have web3.js, so let's make sure we have web3.js so that we can do all the information. Perfect. Let's go back to the test. We have is initialized. It's doing the initialize RPC call, but it's not providing any of the accounts that we need. Um, so I am going to now set this information over here. So just for com completeness sake, so I can get my pair, I'm going to do const provider equals anchor dot provider dot env. So I have all the information. Um, we're going to set this as the provider. Um, I want to make sure that I get the pair out of it. So const pair equals provider dot wallet as anchor dot wallet. Perfect. I'm going to need this later. Uh, we're going to have to set up our connection so that we can make our PC calls. So cons connection equals new connection. We're going to be working on our local validator. So this will be HTTP uh, 127.00 or dot o one two seven dot o dot o dot one at port eighty eight nine nine which is the default port we're going to use the state commitment of confirmed so that we make sure that we're always looking for confirmed things um, if we look right here it's saying hey I don't know what connection is we would just want to add it from web three js um, and then finally let's see we have it yeah we already have the program so we're good to go uh, I'm going to create a separate function. So async function create mint token. And we're going to create this mint token and log it. So this will be const mint equals await create mint. This is a function from SPL, uh, the SPL token library. So let's go add that in real quick. Add import from SPL token. This is going to require quite a few things. We're, we already have the connection. Uh, we're going to have the pair dot pair, which means it's the, the actual public key. 
uh, we're going to have to do the, oh, sorry, pair.pair is the signer. Pair.public key is the actual public key of the, the pair. Another pair.public key. Uh, let's make this token of nine decibels. Uh, and that is it. So we're going to have the mint. The mint is, let's see what kind of, what type is the mint. That's a public key. Uh, we want to make sure that we create this off of a key pair though. So let's go up here and we're going to do mint key pair. And this is the reason why we want to do this is we want to have that key pair for use throughout all the tests. And we don't have to restart tests to have the same uh, key pair being, or a previous key pair that we no longer have being used in the stake program, and then not be able to create tokens off of it. So let's create that real quick. So mint key pair, this will be key pair dot generate, I believe. And it's going to say that I don't have it, so let's add it back in. Perfect. Uh, and just for funsies, we're going to console log in. Now, you don't want to normally log this but because of the test, it should be okay. This is so that we can get the secret and we run it. So here, what we'll do is we'll add the mint key pair to say, hey, use this mint key pair in order to create my mint. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're gonna create that mint. So await create mint token. All right, so this should log my mint. So we'll do console.log mint. And we also have the mint key pair. So let's do anchor test again and see what happens. All right, perfect. So we have the public key, which is right here uh, of the mint. And then here's the secret key. So in order to make sure that we're using the mint, the same mint always, I'm going to grab the secret key real quick. And instead of generating a new one every single time, I'm going to use that secret key that we used previously. So this would be from secret key. Um, this would be new u int 8 array. And then you just include the, the secret from earlier. Perfect. So this would create the same mint every single time. We don't need to use this anymore. So we're just going to not use it here because we've already created it on our local. But if we do need to create it, we can recreate it there. So we're going to move these console logs because we don't need those anymore. All right. So next up, we need to create that vault account for whenever we did the, the, the token vault account. Because whenever we run this test, it's going to require that account in order to run that instruction. So let's create it. So because it's a PDA, we're going to have to create it off of this. So this is going to be vault account. We're going to set it equal to uh, basically how you derive a PDA. So that's using a function off of public key. Dot. We're going to do find program address sync, and then it's going to be from the buffer. Dot from. And if we look over here, it was from vault. So we're going to use vault. And finally, we need to always include the program ID. Uh, is it program or program ID? Just for, yeah, okay. So program dot program ID. There we go. So now we have the vault account and we can use it within our instruction. So over here, we're going to have to make sure that we have the accounts and we're going to have to include the accounts that are required in order to run this. So this would have to need the signer. So if you remember, we have to have a signer in order to pay for this. So it'd be payer dot public key. Uh, we're going to need the account or the vault account. So this is token vault account, vault account. And then finally, we're going to need the mint. And the reason why we need the mint is so that it knows what mint is expected for this token vault account. So this mint is going to be the mint key pair dot public key. Perfect. So we have the initialize. So initialize will work once. Let's see what, how, how it works. All right, our test passed. We initialized the token vault. It has no tokens to begin with, but we initialize it. And now we can have users staking to the stake program and destaking later. So let's go write it. Let's 
functions. All right, so first off, we're gonna to have to create a new set of accounts for this stake. So first, we're gonna do the same thing as we did earlier. We're gonna do a set up a struct for all the accounts. So derive accounts. This is gonna be a pub struct. Uh, it's called stake so that it, we know exactly what it's interacting with. Uh, and first off, what you do know is that you're always going to need a signer because we're going to have we're going to have accounts that will need to be created within the stake instruction. It won't always need to be created, but sometimes it will. So account mutable, and this will be public signer signer info. All right. Uh, the other one that we'll have to need to create is we're going to have to create the stake info. So outside of here, I'm going to create a different account called stake info, just so that we have it and can easily reference it. So this will be uh, account and pub struct stake info pub. We're going to do stake at slot. So what this will do is it will tell us that whenever that user staked into their stake account, we know exactly at what slot they staked. Slot is really the source of truth for time on the cluster. There is the ability to use a basically a timestamp, but it's not to be relied on because it's kind of like an Oracle timestamp versus slots is we know that it's always going to be the correct slot according to the cluster. Finally, we're going to create a public key just for error sake of is staked. Um, this, or sorry, it's going to be a boolean. This will tell us whether or not the, the user is already staked. And if they are, we don't want them to stake more. Or if they are, are not and we're trying to destake later, we don't want to run into issues. All right, so let us create that stake info for this stake instruction. All right, so here we have, we have an account. We know that if it does the account already, if the account does not already exist, we want to create it. So in it, if needed again, the seeds, if we looked over here, the stake info is stake info seed and the user public key. So let's make sure we include that. So constants, this will be stake info seed and then signer dot key dot as underscore ref. Because it's a PDA, we always need a bump. We're going to have just as the pair as the signer as earlier. Uh, one thing to note is this is going to be a token account. So just as earlier, we're going to need these three accounts always because it is a token account. So let's just add that real quick. And because it's a token account, just like previously, we're going to have to inc include the mint. And then we're going to have to include the authority. So this authority will be itself. So let's name it real quick before we finish that. So public account, public, this will be the stake info account. And then this will be an account of type token account. All right, so the authority is itself. All right, so we have our stake info account. Now we need to make sure that we have the user stake account. Uh, and actually, yeah, so the user stake account, and we're also going to need the gold token account that the user owns. So that's three different accounts that we'll need at this specific time. So let's create that. So first we'll create the one that is their stake account. So just like before, it's another token account. It'll be in it if needed, because we want to create it if it doesn't already exist. The seeds will be, if we look here, it's token plus user pub key. So constants, token, seed, signer, dot key, dot as, ref. Uh, because of the PDA, we'll have a bump. We're going to have to have a signer in case it needs to have pay, be paid for by someone. Just like previously, it's going to be the token mint equal mint. And then token authority equals itself. So let's call itself, so public. Um, this will be the stake, stake account. So we'll call it stake, 
account. It'll be an account of type info and token account. So just like before, our stake account, there we go. Um, so now we have the stake info account and we have the, the user stake account. Finally, we're gonna need that token account that the, the user already has. So this will be, just like before, an account. However, there's a few things that it's not gonna be created or not gonna be here. So because it's outside the program, this specific account is outside the program, we're not gonna do an in if needed because you can do that on the client side. So let's just make sure that we have, it's mutable because we're going to move funds or tokens from this account. Uh, and then it's associated to, since it's an associated token account, we're gonna have to make sure the mint is the same. And then the associated token authority is the signer. So this is because this is being signed by the user, not itself. So this is gonna be public. Uh, this is gonna be user token account, account info token account. All right, so if you notice that we use this associated token account and we didn't, we haven't already Im included that. So we need to make sure we include it now. And also because we have an associated token account, we're gonna to have to need the, the program here for it as well. So we're gonna to have to do pub associated token pro, token program, everything's underscore program info associated token. All right, I have not already imported that. So we need to make sure that we import it, otherwise we're gonna run into errors. So it's gonna be associated token associated token. All right, so now we have everything within this struct. Uh, one thing that we need to do is we need to change this into use stake instead of initialize. Now let's see if it compiles and run it and fix any of the errors that may show up. All right, so it compiled, everything worked as expected and we're good to go. So. We just ran into some warnings just as before. These are things that we have not used uh, just for clarity's sake, since we are not using the context in the initialize. Let's just do that to get rid of that warning. All right, so we have the accounts. Now we need to actually implement the staking logic. All right, so let's get started with that. So first off, whenever I write stake or execute stake, I'm gonna have to make sure that I have the stake info um, and this is going to be immutable because I'm going to change what the info is provided in there because now we're staking. And I want to make sure that I'm grabbing it early. All right, so I have the stake info. Now, there's some cases that I want to account for. Like, for example, if a user stakes but has no tokens, or if the user is trying to stake and already staked. And finally, if you're thinking in the future for like someone that is trying to de-stake over here, but they've, they're not actually staked, we wanna throw an error as well. So let's make sure that we create all these errors or these error codes to be used within the program. So down here, I'm gonna create an error code. Pub enum error code. And we're gonna create a few errors. So first off, we're gonna do message. This message is gonna be tokens are already staked. So we don't wanna stake if we already have stake, stake tokens. We wanna make sure the user destakes at that point. So we'll call this is staked. Secondly, we'll create the message of uh, tokens are not staked. So if they're trying to destake later, we don't want them to do that if they don't already have tokens. So we'll call not staked. And then finally, we're gonna have to create the, the error message of, uh, let's say there's no tokens to stake. So what, what, are you what are you trying to stake for? So no tokens to stake. And this will be no tokens. 
Perfect. So up here, what we're going to do is we're going to create those different error responses, and then we're going to make sure that we return them if they hit those specific conditions. So first off, if stake info dot is staked, so we're already staked, let's make sure that we return an error. Error code is staked dot into. And fi finally, if the amount, so if they have no tokens or they're trying to stake no tokens, let's not waste compute time. Let's return the error, error code, no tokens. All right, now let's get to actual staking logic. I'm gonna build this just to make sure. Ah, perfect. So I ran into an issue. Um, this is because it can't find the stake infos off of stake. Let's go down here and realize that, did I, oh, it's because it's called stake info account. Is staked. So it's saying that my stake info does not have is staked. Let's go down here and see what I called it. Should be is staked. Let's figure out what went wrong. So what I had here is on my stake, I called this a token account instead of stake info. It should be stake info. Let's, and then if I do stake info, it shouldn't need all this other information as well. So let's make sure I remove that are not needed. All right, so we have the stake info seed. It's not a token account. So we need to make sure I remove everything that's not here. So this is a problem on my part. Uh, because it is a custom account, we're going to have to include the space. So space equals eight, eight because that's the discriminator that is always required at the beginning of the anchor account. Um, standard mem size of stake info. Perfect. And so now this should work. All right, great, look at that. No errors and we're ready to go. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure I get the time. And how you get time is you're using a account or a sysvar that's called the clock. So let's grab that. So use Solana program clock clock. Now, because I'm using Solana program, I need to make sure that I include it over here. Solana program, let's just make sure that it is actually Solana program. I believe it's Solana dash program, so to underscore. And then this would be, because I'm using 1.16.0, same exact version. All right, so now that I have the clock, let us actually grab the time or the slot that at which I am at. So here we go. So over here, I'm gonna grab the clock. So let clock equals clock get. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm creating the stake info, uh, staked at slot. And we wanna set that to clock.slot, which is a U64. And then stake info dot is staked equals to true. All right, so I've now set it to the current slot and I've said that I've already staked. Now let's actually do the stake. So I'm gonna do let stake amount equals amount. So this is the amount that I have required. And we're gonna do something special. So because the instruction requires an amount that's U64, uh, this is something to consider. Stake dot slot is an involved field. Let's go figure out what I called it. Stake, oh, stake at slot. All right, so that should work. So the amount that say you send from the front end, if it has nine decimal places, which we know from our program, our test that we created a mint key of nine decimal places represented on the program side is actually a, a one. So one token would equal one with nine zeros afterwards. So we need to actually make sure that we're getting the right amount of tokens instead of the opposite. So say if we just made stake amount equals to amount, 
we would only have this amount instead. So we need to make sure that we're getting the correct token amount that the front end expects. So we're gonna do a little bit of math here. So we're gonna do checked multiplication. Um, this is gonna be 10 u64 dot power context accounts mint decimals. So raise it to 10 to the power of the amount of decimals so they can get that 10, one with nine zeros instead of point zero 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 something something nine or one. Uh, so this would be as you 32 dot unwrap. And then we got a transfer. So transfer is a new thing off of the token on SBL. We make sure that we're including it so that we can actually call it. So transfer, transfer. All right, so let's go back down here and we're going to now call the transfer. So we call transfer. This will call CPI context new. So what this is, is whenever you're trying to call another instruction off of a different program, you need to make sure you use CPI context new. Um, there's also new with signer if I need to sign for it. For this one, we don't need to sign for it uh, because the token account is owned by the signer versus the program itself. So what we'll do is CPI context new, and we will include the accounts. So we're gonna do it off of the accounts of the token program to account info. Uh, we're going to do the transfer function off of the token program. And we're going to do from, so it's from, to, and then the authority. All right, so we know that this from is going to be from the token account to the user stake account, and the authority is the signer. So what we called it is this is from user token account. So this is actually context.accounts dot user token account dot to account info. We're gonna do to the stake account counts stake account to account info. And then finally authority is the signer. And one thing that we are missing from all this is we have the transfer function, but what's the amount that I'm actually transferring? So up here we'll do the stake amount, and then we should be good. So let's build it and see if it works. All right, so we can see here, it built just fine, and we're ready to test it. So let's get to testing it. All right, so here we are, we are in the test now, and we need to make sure that we create a new integration test for staking. So we're gonna go down here, I'm gonna do IT, our integration test. I'm gonna do stake, uh, it's gonna be a new async function. Boom, so we're now gonna be ready to create a new integration test for staking. If we look back here on the actual implementation, uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to include all these accounts into the instruction used for staking. So we have to make sure that we include all of them. Just for checking what accounts and using seeing what's going on, let's quickly create the transaction and get all the errors that are we're expecting. So we'll do await program.methods, and this will be just as before, we'll do dot stake. Uh, this will be new anchor.bn. We'll just stake one token for now. Uh, we'll, we'll have to have our signers, or I guess for now we don't need that. Uh, we're going to just call the RPC just to get it to fail. Um, and then we want to make sure that we log the transaction just so that we can see what's going on. Um, we can do this really quick, just taking the previous console log. Boom. All right, so this should fail because we don't have any of the accounts that we had previously. Uh, let's just make sure that it fails as expected. 
So we go here, anchor test. It'll try to create or initialize it again. Uh, because it's already initialized, uh, that should be just fine uh, because we do init if needed. All right, so it failed. The initialized succeeded, but the stake failed. And the reason being is we don't have the accounts. That's perfect. That means it's failing for exactly the reasons that we expected. So let's create all these accounts. Uh, so first of all, we're going to create the let's create the user token account. So user token account equals await. Uh, this is how you do it from the SPL token library, get or create associated token account. What this does is if the token account doesn't already exist, create it. If it, if it does exist, just get the address. Um, so get the PDA. So that requires a connection, uh, requires pair.pair, .pair, requires our mint key pair, public key so that it knows what mint to grab from, and then the pair.pair .pair in, in case or what, who is the owner? So it's myself, public key, perfect. So now we have the user token account. Um, one thing to note is there's currently no token stored here. So we need to make sure that we mint some tokens so that we have some to, to actually send over. So let's do await mint to uh, connection pair dot pair, which is the signer. Uh, mint key pair, public key, because I need to know which one to mint, uh, user token account, so mint to this address. Uh, this is the pair.pair .pair for the, the owner. And then we're gonna do we're gonna do quite a lot of tokens. So this is just one to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 11. So quick fix, upgrade, there we go. So here we are, we're minting some tokens to our token account. And now we're ready to create the other accounts. So next up, we want to get the stake info account. So let's get the same PDA. So just as before, do public key dot find program address sync. It's going to be buffer dot from, and it's going to be our specific uh, our key. So if we go over here. Remember previously it was stake underscore info. So stake info, oops. Stake underscore info. And then it will be also the public key that we had previously, or the payer's public key, the signer's public key. So payer dot public key dot to buffer. And then since it's a PDA, we always have the program dot program ID. And there we go, we have the stake info account. Next up, we're going to get the, let's get the stake token account or the stake account. So let, we're gonna do stake account equals same as before, public key dot find program address sync. Um, the for the stake account, it's token and user public key. So we'll just grab this real quick and replace stake info with token. Always have the program dot program ID. There we go. So we have right now, we have the user token account, we have the stake info, we have the stake account. Finally, we need the gold token vault. So we're gonna go up here. We're just gonna copy and paste this vault account. Uh, actually, let's look at the accounts real quick. We have the user account, stake account, stake info, signer. We actually don't need anything else. So we have all the accounts that we need. Um, let us, let's see what else. Oh, for one thing that we don't have is for this specific address. So this is just getting the address of the stake account. That's a token account, but there's no guarantee that it doesn't already exist. So let's, let's create it. So this be await, get, or create associated token account, uh, connection pair dot pair, mint key pair, pair dot public key. Let's see. Oh, mint key pair dot public key. Perfect. So that should be created for there. We have the user token account. We have the one off, off the uh, stake. Uh, and then finally, now we need to just add them all 
to the RPC call. So here we know that the stake of one, we know that the it's going to require someone to pay for this transaction. So signers is going to be pair dot pair. And then we need the accounts. All right. So if you look at here, we can see all the accounts that are required. So we need a stake info account, which is stake in the info. We need the, let's see, we need the stake account, which is stake account. We need user token account, which is user token account. And then we need, let's see, we already have the mint. Oh, we don't have the mint. So mint, uh, that is going to be the mint key pair dot public key. Um, and that is, we also need the signer because we don't currently have the signer. Let's see what's wrong with this. Oh, it's not type address. So we just do dot address. Let's make sure that we also include the signer. So this will be the signer and this is pair dot public key. Okay, so we have all the accounts now. Let's test it. So let's run it. And if we did everything correctly, it should work. If we didn't, let's just debug it and fix all any of the issues. So it's replaying, it's running. Check and check. We got two passes. So that means we staked one token to the stake program and everything worked as expected. So that's fantastic. That's actually really exciting that it worked first try. It's a rare occasion. So finally, we need to go do the destake instruction. So we go up here. Um, we can see here right now that I'm using initialize. As before, we need to create a new set of accounts for the destake instruction. Otherwise, I don't have the right accounts or the context in order to run it. So let's do it. So derive accounts, uh, public struct destake info. There we go. All right, so we know that we need to have a signer in order to run all of this. So we're going to do account mutable, just as before, pub signer, signer info. And then we need a few other accounts. Um, so we need all the accounts that we have previously. So we need, basically we need all of these accounts because we know that we're going to be running with all the accounts. So if you look at it back here, we're going to be using all these accounts, all in this specific instruction. So we're basically just going to copy and paste all the accounts from pre previous uh, account structs and just make sure we have all of it in the right context. So here we need the user account, we need a stake account, stake info. We're just going to copy those over. Perfect. Uh, and then finally, let's see, we have a stake info, stake account, user token account. We need the vault account. So let's go grab that vault token account up here in stake. Actually, it would be an initialize. Here we go. There we go. So we should have everything now. So four accounts, token vault, stake info account, stake account, and user token account. Uh, because we're not creating these at this time, we actually don't need all the information every single time. So we can remove all these pairs and signers and just have the seeds and the bump. And these will all be mutable because they don't, they already exist at this point. So we don't need in it if needed. All right, so we have all the accounts in our dstake. Now let's create the actual implementation of dstake here. So if we go up, we're going to go up here. We're going to set the, the context as dstake, and we're going to start writing the logic. So here what we have is we are going to first, just like in stake construction, we're going to do let stake info equals mutable context.accounts.stakeinfo. All right, so now we have the stake info. Uh, actually, just for tech test, we're going to do anchor build just to make sure we did all those accounts correctly. 
All right, so perfect. That told us something real quick. Is it's taken from count? I think everything else worked though. Yep, everything else worked. All right, so stake info. Um, what we want to do is just like in the stake instruction, we want to check if the stake info is staked, but we want to make sure that it's not already, it's not unstaked or destaked. So stake info dot is staked. Return error, error code not staked. So we don't want to try ha, have someone try to destake if they're not already staked. That would cause issues. It's kind of like a security vulnerability. Um, so let's go here. We're going to grab the clock. So like clock equals clock get. And we want to figure out the amount of slots passed since the original time that we staked. So we'll do let slots underscore passed equals clock dot slot minus stake info dot stake at slot. All right, so now we know how many time how many slots has passed. Now we need to also get the current stake amount that we have. So let stake amount equals context dot accounts dot uh, this is going to be the stake account dot amount. All right. So we have, we have the amount. We have the slots passed. Now we need to basically calculate the reward. So let's calculate the reward real quick. Um, so let reward equals. Um, so this is kind of like where we need to think about it. Uh, I'm going to make something very simple as the reward. I'm going to make the reward just, let's say, one token per slot. Uh, most other stake programs, they don't necessarily do this. They do kind of like a token amount based off of the percentage over the circling supply per slot. Um, that way they kind of give a specific curve of amount and they know the, what the end date here, I'm just giving an amount. So anybody that stakes, it doesn't matter how much you stake, you could stake one token, you get one per slot, or you can stake 100 tokens, you still get one per slot. So as homework, what I would recommend is mess around with changing this reward parameter. Try to make it based off of the total amount they stake versus just a set constant amount per slot. All right, just for ease of use, as stated, slots passed as U64. We're going to just do checked multiplication. So for each slot, we're going to do, let's say, one U64.pow. Actually, this would be 10, right? Yeah, 10. So for each slot passed, we're just going to do one, uh, one token. So get the correct amount by doc accounts dot uh, mint dot decimals as u32 and dot unwrap. All right. Now we need to do a few things. Uh, we need to do two different transfers. We need to transfer the rewards that you got to your gold token account. And then finally, we need to transfer the current stake back to the token account. So let us do the first one. So let's do the vault one. Uh, so if you remember that the vault, it was the authority of itself. So it's a PDA. You need to be able to get the signer in order to sign for the transfer from the account back into the user owned token account. So that means you need to get the bump. And this is how you get the bump. You do do context dot bumps dot get. Um, this, I'm going to leave that just for a moment, dot unwrap. And so this gets the bump based off of the specific account. So we'll go down here, and this will be the stake account, or the, sorry, the vault account. So this is token vault account. And I'll be able to get the bump from there. So here we go. 
token vault account. Next, we're going to get the signer from the bump. Signer. Uh, so this is how the, what the signer looks like within a program. So three of those, and then U8 equals Amstram, Amstram. We have our seeds, so constants. This is going to be the vault seed, and then the bump. Perfect. So we have the vault seed and the bump. Now we can actually do the transfer. So this is going to be like a elevated transfer or an elevated uh, CPI call because we're using the program to sign for a specific PDA. So we'll do just as before, transfer, CPI context, new with signer. This is where things are getting different because we're signing for a PDA within the program. Um, context.accounts.token program because we're going to be signing uh, with the token pro or we're going to be transferring using an instruction within the token program to account info transfer same as before it's going to be from to authority all right so we're going to be transferring from the vault to the token account so let's do that transfer real quick so context.accounts.vault token vault account dot to account info uh, two we're going to do the user account so user or contacts dot accounts dot token I think it's what to, user token account dot to account info and then finally the authority will be uh, my myself so we'll just copy and paste it so token account all right, since we need to be able to use the signer to sign for this that we just created, we're gonna do signer. And then finally, we need to transfer the specific reward amount. There we go. So this D stake will calculate the reward. It'll get the signer of the token vault account and then transfer from the token vault account the amount of reward to the user token account. All right, so we have another transfer in order to do. We need to also transfer from the user stake account to the user's gold token account in their wallet. All right, so let's do let uh, staker. So we know which the staker is context.accounts.signer.key. Let bump. We're getting the bump because we're going to be signing for a different account again. Context bumps dot get. Uh, this one's going to be, let's see what I called it. Go to D stake down here. It's going to be the stake account to the token account. So we're going to be signing for the stake account. Perfect. So dot unwrap. And then we're going to get the signer. So let signer equals, just as before, the seeds, uh, this is going to be staker as well, dot as ref, and then finally I believe it was the bump, so the slice with the bump. semicolon. Perfect. Now, just as before, we're going to need to do the same transfer uh, CPI call. So transfer. All right, so CPI context, new with signer. Uh, this is going to be the context.accounts.token program. We're using the same token program to do the, tr the transfer. The transfer uh, from to authority. All right, so our from will be context.accounts. Uh, this will be from the, what is it, the user stake account, so stake account. 
dot two account info. Uh, the two will be the same two as before, so it'll be to the user token token account, and then the authority is itself. All right, so we have it as the signer, so that we can sign for it, and then finally we have the stake amount so that we know the amount that we'll be transferring is equal to the current stake amount. All right, one thing that I wanna do real quick is that the stake info, we wanna be able to reset it so that we don't have something that might cause some issues later. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're not considered staked anymore because we de-staked. And then just for, this is not something that you have to do, but I want to make sure that I do it, is that I'm gonna set it as the current slot uh, so that if there is any issues, uh, the blast radius is smaller because I'll update the slot. All right, let's anchor build it and see if I ran into any errors. All right, looks like I ran into a few errors, that's all right. Let's go up to the first error. You always go up to the first error to see what's going on. So in type ascription cannot be followed by a method call. Let's go see what that is. That's 101. So right here, we're at 101. Uh, transfer, let's see what I did wrong. Oh, so I think what I did wrong is these are parentheses instead of brackets. Easy fix, let's just grab that, make it a bracket instead, um, and run it again, see what, what other errors pop up. Looks like I ran into a few more errors. Um, it says that I don't know what stake account is. Let's see where this is. This is 107, so stake amount. Did I get the amount anywhere? Uh, yeah, I did get the amount up here. So now I need to figure out why it doesn't know what to do there. Oh, it's because I just don't have a comma. See, these are just very simple errors. Uh, let's see, final error, let's see. No field token program. Okay, and this is in line 82. Um, so accounts, token program, ah, so I just did it twice. That's easy. And boom, we're all good. So this result, maybe an error should be handled. Let's see what that means. Uh, unused must be used. Um, that is in line 97. So this right here, let's just, let's see, I believe that's what you're supposed to do to get rid of it. Yeah, so that was one of them, and then I gotta do the other one as well. Perfect, the last warning is self is unused. Let's remove that and run it. Boom, look at that, no warnings, because we used all the variables and it compiled successfully. So let's go test it out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create yet another integration test and this integration test will be for destaking. So integration test destake equals async function call. All right, we need to get all the accounts in order to do the destake call. So first off, I'm just gonna grab this transaction real, real quick, paste it, and then we're also gonna paste the transaction signature line. There we go. And let's just remove these accounts and the signers. And we're going to just have the call of D stake. All right, so we're D staking, we're calling the, the RPC call. Now we know that from previously, we need to have the, all the accounts that are required for this instruction. Uh, so, and the payer in order to pay for this instruction. So we're gonna do signers. Uh, this is gonna be payer.payer .payer and dot accounts. All right, so let's go fill up these accounts. We need all these different accounts. What's great is previously, we, cr we got all these accounts already. So it actually makes it really nice for us. So we can just do this, get all these accounts put them all here. We don't need them into anymore because it already has uh, some amount in it. So we have the user token account, we have the stake info, we have the stake account. We still need the 
we still so vault we don't have the vault so let's go grab the vault from up here all right so we have all the accounts now so we have the user token account stake info account stake account and the vault account so let's fill this out so stake account will be stake account, stake info account will be stake info. Uh, this will be user token account will be the user token account address because it's not an address. It's called a, let's see, it's called an account. So we have to make sure we get the address. Um, we have the vault account, which is the vault. We have our signer which is pair.public key. And we have in our, and finally our mint, which is mint key pair dot public key. All right. So we have the all the accounts, we got all the accounts, and we're trying to do the following. Our instruction should pull tokens from the gold token vault, move them to the gold token account, and then also pull tokens from the user stake account and pull them and destake them into the gold token account. And finally, the stake info should be updated. Now, if we run this, this should run to an error. And I believe it should be, uh, if I'm not, not incorrect, it should be 0x1. So let's get it, let's see if we hit that error, and then we'll explain what it is. All right, perfect. So we ran to an error, destake. 0x1, custom program error 0x1. So let me explain what that is. Okay, so 0x1, let's think about it. We ran into an error for destaking. What could that mean? Um, so as mentioned before, we're grabbing the rewards from the token vault, putting them into our token account, grabbing the rewards from their user stake account, and putting them into our token account. Uh, if we look up the error, um, so 0x1 is coming from token, uh, so we can see zero would be error, not rent exempt. Oh, but zero X one would be insufficient funds for this operation. So transferring from one of these token accounts is telling us that it does not have the funds to transfer from that token account back to our, our user owned token account. We know that we deposited the funds for to the user staking account. So we know that there's already funds there. However, that gold token vault never received funds. So it's just sitting there with zero funds and we're trying to grab rewards from it. And essentially, because we're doing that, it has zero funds, we're running into this insufficient funds error. So let's go fix that. So going back to the test here, we know that this vault account does not have enough rewards. So let's mint a bunch of the tokens to that vault account. So what we do is we do await mint two and it's connection. Uh, we need the pair, so it's once again pair dot pair. Uh, we'll need the mint, so mint key pair dot public key. Uh, we will need to make sure that we're minting to the vault account. The owner is pair dot pair, or this is the this is the authority. And finally, we want to just mint a whole bunch. So let's just do one e twenty one. Um, so what this does is this is making sure that we're minting a bunch of tokens to the vault account to guarantee that we have enough to distribute as rewards afterwards. All right, so let's run the test and see if it works. So if everything worked just fine, then we should have it initialize, it should stake, and then destake. So look at that. We have all three passing, and we have completed running the test and checking that our staking program worked both initializing, staking, and destaking. To reiterate what we did, we created a stake program that allowed people to deposit their tokens on in it and get rewards of the same token. There are a number of things that you can do with this. Like for example, the original example given, the woodcutters generating wood by depositing those woodcutter tokens and generating the wood token. Uh, in our case, we took our gold tokens from seven C's and generated even more gold tokens. So look out for the rest of the bootcamp and thank you for joining us. Bye.